gals and ghouls. Last week, we started off our spooky series by talking about death. It's like pretty metal, honestly. But we talked about how we don't need to be afraid of death. We don't need to be, have any fear of it or let that be like a negative symbol of this season. But how this season is actually a great reminder of death and how we need to be especially intentional during this time to pray for those who we've lost. But this week, I want to focus on another common spooky season attribute, which is fear. Fear is such an interesting concept, and I love having a whole season dedicated to it because it's such a unique thing. It can be such a good emotion sometimes, actually, because it can keep us safe. Or it can be such a dangerous emotion because it can be paralyzing or controlling and so many other ways. There's something about fear that releases so much adrenaline that it can be kind of addictive, weirdly. That's why freaks like me love horror movies. That's literally my favorite genre. I love this season, and I watch horror movies like all year round. But during October, during Spooktober, it's all I watch, like constantly. Because it can be exciting, and it's, it's exhilarating to find a horror movie that actually freaks me out and makes me fearful. And that doesn't happen very often anymore because I'm like desensitized to it. But when it does, I hate it because it, it bugs me and it keeps me up at night. Like when I watched Paranormal Activity again last week, it, it kept me up for hours. It just bugged me to death. But I love it at the same time. I love the adrenaline rush that it gives me. I love that it kind of freaks me out. And, I mean, it's that same feeling that is the reason that people love roller coasters, because they're dangerous, they're fast, they're exhilarating. So fear's kind of an interesting emotion because it's a negative feeling that can still be kind of fun, weirdly, and it's very unique. But it's not just an emotion, it's also an instinct. Like, the kind of fear that keeps you from taking candy from the shady guy in the van. Yeah, that's, that's a good fear. Or the kind that makes you stay away from dangerous animals or be extra cautious, careful at very high heights. I mean, these keep us safe. These are good things. These are good fears to have. Research has determined that human beings are actually only born with two innate fears. Two fears that everyone has and we're all born with. And it's a fear of the dark and a fear of loud noises. Because the dark means that like, you literally don't know what's around you. You're surrounded by the unknown. And loud noises can travel long distances. So once again, loud noises instinctively sound dangerous to us. And if you can't see its origin, it's scary because there could be an unknown threat approaching you. So really, our innate fears are just of the unknown. They're, they're different aspects of things that are unknown to us. Which kind of makes sense because those could be a threat that you, you don't know what could possibly be a threat to you. And these are mostly survival instincts, honestly, so they can keep us safe and they don't necessarily have a negative effect on us. They can be a good thing. But there are negative types of fear too. Actually, Father Ken and I were talking about this this week, about how annoying it is that the English language only has one word for fear. And there's no distinction no distinction between healthy fears and unhealthy fears. Like, so he decided, and I, I like this, so I'm going to take this and I'm going to run with it, but he decided to use the word caution for healthy fears. Fears that, that make you cautious of things that you should be cautious of. And using the word fear instead to only describe unhealthy fears that have a negative impact on you. So an unhealthy fear paralyzes you. It can hold you back. It can control you, which is something that we should try to avoid because we shouldn't let anything hold control over us. 2 Timothy 1.7 literally says, For God did not give us a spirit of cowardice, but rather of power and love and self-control. That's why you can't let anything else control you because self-control is so important, and that's the most healthy thing for you. God gave us free will on purpose. He loves us so much that he didn't want to control us or let anything 
else control us for that matter. Fears even of the future or of loneliness and more abstract things like that can be paralyzing and control our thoughts too, not just our actions. And that can be just as bad for us. That can be extremely unhealthy. That's like the, the trend of overthinking. You just completely overthink these fears and they like control you, they control your mind. And nothing should have that much power over you. Nothing. And honestly, while we're on this subject, I want to acknowledge something that we don't usually like to talk about. And that's the devil and demons. And I'm going to drop something on you that you may not believe, but you shouldn't fear them. You should not fear them. Now, you should have a healthy caution towards them, and you should avoid them. You should stay away from them. You should not try to talk to them. And you should ignore the temptations that they try to put in front of you. You should ignore the ways that they, they try to mess with you and, and make you fearful. But, because again, that's, that's healthy to be cautious of things that are bad for you and dangerous. But there's no reason to fear them. They have no control over you. No power over you unless you give it to them. And being fearful of them gives them some control and power over you. They literally cannot do anything to you unless you let them, unless you invite them in. And don't get me wrong, they're, they're sly and they're sneaky and they may try to work their way in, but that's why you can't fear them because that means that you're literally giving them some power over you. And that is what you want to avoid more than anything is to give them power and control over you. So where is this in scripture? It, it says, Psalms 55 says, my heart is pounding within me. Death's terrors fall upon me. Fear and trembling overwhelm me. Shuddering sweeps over me. But I will call upon God. And the Lord will save me. And if that's not enough, then check out Psalms 23.4, which says, Even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. For you are with me. You, Lord, are with me. So although there are some things that we should be healthily cautious of, we have literally nothing to actually fear. Don't let anything control you or your thoughts or your actions. Don't let anything hold you back. Don't let anything have power over you. Don't give anything power over you. But remember, that God wants you to have your own free will. And he loves you. And he will always be there for you. Take some time during prayer tonight to try and identify those fears that you have. Because we're all afraid of something. You can't pretend like you're, you have no fear. And oftentimes it's more abstract things, honestly, like loneliness or whatever it may be. And try to be more conscious of that this next week, of how your fears are controlling you. And try to reduce how much you let them do so. Try to reduce how much they're in your head, how much you think about them, how much they bother you, or you worry about them. Which may be possible through prayer and handing it over to God, giving him that fear and saying, no, I trust in you, you're gonna help me through this. Or it may possibly require some counseling to help you do so, which, I mean, there is absolutely no shame in that. And that's an important part of many people's journeys. So if that's something that you need to think about and pray about this next week, then, then do it. Try and figure out what you need to do to conquer these fears because that's what I want for you. I want for you to try to conquer these fears instead of letting them conquer you. And through all of it, remember that as you walk through the valley of this spooky season, have no fear, for God is with you. All the angels and saints, pray for us. Amen.